When Claire first approached me, it was with the craziest idea I had ever heard of, and my first, and only reaction was to tell her she had taken one brick to many out of her wall of common sense. But, she was persistent if nothing else, and after about a week of listening to her nag at me, I finally gave in, telling her I would try it, but just that one time. I took it all with good humor, confident that all her efforts would be for naught. After all, boys never make anything but ugly girls, right? It wasn't so bad when she worked on me, but much to my chagrin, when she was done with me and the barrage of magic wands she used were set down, I could finally look in the mirror. That's when I could see for myself that I looked almost as good as she did, a revelation that both excited and scared me at the same time. The only other time I had ever dressed up as a girl was for Halloween when I was 12, so you can easily imagine how shocked I was when I saw the way I looked. Rather than just another guy in a dress turned really ugly girl, my sister had managed to turn me not just into a girl, but a really cute girl. I could not guess how she did it, maybe it was because Claire and I looked so much alike. Both mom and dad thought it was hysterical, the fact that I was better looking as a girl than I ever was as a guy, and worse, my dad even blurted out exactly that when he saw me. Sadly, the fact was that as much as I wanted to deny it, he was right and I knew it, so what was I going to say to him, or anyone else? My looks aside, I felt inept and very awkward in that dress, with not the slightest idea of what to do or how to act. Not having any pockets only made it worse as I kept groping for them, hoping for some relief which didn't come. With some strenuous urging from everyone, I stayed dressed that way until it was time to go to bed. After a few hours I got used to the constraint of the dress, quit trying to find pockets, and generally got used to wearing the dress, but after dinner Claire pulled me aside and dropped another, and much bigger bombshell on me. You know, you look just cute as hell, almost as good as any of my friends, and since there's no way you can deny that, even dad thinks so we'll do the fair, you can help me there, and I know that you'll have a great time, then, since it's obvious that you'll need the practice anyway, I'm going to make arrangements for you to join me at Beth's party on Saturday. Oh no you don't, I'm not going to any party, especially when I'm dressed like this. Yes you are. You have to. And what's more, I'll bet that you'll not only have a great time, you'll also be able to practice being a girl. No. I said firmly, even while my sister was grinning and nodding her head yes. Beth is expecting me to bring someone, but I didn't tell her it was going to be you silly. I told her I was bringing a friend. She thinks it's a new guy, but, come on. It'll be fun. Claire, I. Trust me. If you think you look good right now, wait until I'm done getting you ready for a party. What I mean is, we'll go all out, not just part way like this time. We'll remove the rest of whatever body hair you have, then I'll set your hair, and I'll get you a few other things that you'll need, things like a fitted and padded panty brief, a real good one that will give you a much better shape. Trust me on this. You'll be so hot that nobody will ever guess that you're my brother. As I stood there pondering what she said, part of me wanted to run out of the room while another part was telling me to go for it. I thought I knew how I was going to look when Claire first suggested getting me all dressed up, but I wasn't even close. Then we showed our parents what I looked like, and to be frank, I did not like the kind of attention I got from them, their comments making me uneasy and more than a bit angry. When dad said that I looked better as a girl than a guy, well, that really pissed me off, enough that after I thought about what Claire said about going to the party, I cast aside my own common sense and calmly nodded my head yes. I decided to make dad's laughter go away. If he thought I looked better as a girl, then I was damned well going to show him just how good I could really look, and my sister was going to help me do just that. Then we would see what he had to say. That was the biggest reason why I agreed to let my sister help me look even better, but to be honest, my creeping curiosity was getting to me as well. I decided that I would take my chances by letting my sister get me all dolled up and would also take my chances at the party. If I could quiet my parents' laughter, but mostly my dad's comments, it was going to be worth it, I was going to try hard to shock him right out of his chair, that much I knew for sure. We would see how hard he laughed after that. On the day of the party Claire and I started early, and after I began, it was almost an hour before I stepped out of the bath, just as hairless as I assumed my sister was. 
I had even shaved certain private parts in order to eliminate what I thought was excess hair. Wrapped only in a towel, I sat at her vanity and she began the process of setting my hair. When my head was covered with rollers, she used a needle to pierce each ear, sticking a black and gold earring in each lobe, then came the makeup, and believe me, Claire was masterful when she directed me as I changed my normally bland face into that of a beautiful girl, even better than the time before. She handed me a pair of new panties that were high cut on the sides like hers, then turned and waited until I had them on. After that she gave me a black panty brief that was padded on the sides and the back with some sort of gel, which would obviously give me the proper curves. Once I had it on I saw that it had obviously given me a rounder, and bigger butt and some well-rounded hips, and by just touching it I could tell that it felt like the real thing. Then came the black satin and lace corselet, which she tightened enough to reduce my midsection to a modestly smaller size. To give me a bit more shape, she pushed some small pads under my own newly compressed flesh, which created what looked like a superb set of breasts, and gave me the sort of form almost any girl would surely be proud of. Then came the sheer to the waist pantyhose which only exemplified my legs, making them look long and sexy. As I stood up, Claire took my measurements, 36-25-37 to be exact, with a modest B-cup. She and I knew, because we could see for ourselves, that when we were done, her goal of making me look really cute was most certainly going to become a reality, and I found myself wanting to see the finished girl as soon as possible. I couldn't help but be intrigued by the girl I saw emerging in the mirror, yet still wondering why I looked so much better as a girl than a guy. The dress came next. It was all black with a full skirt and twin straps to hold it up, the skirt a bit more than two inches above my knees and showed off a lot of my great legs. Wearing the dress, Claire sat me at the vanity again and started taking out the rollers, then using a brush, she did my hair in a high, fluffy style that was a little wavy, and after trimming my bangs then spraying my hair with super hold hairspray, I could see that my hair was much like I had seen some girls do theirs. Lipstick and some perfume, then the black heels, and finally, a gold, black, and rhinestone bracelet. In every respect I looked like a girl, and we both knew that she had been right. Claire was beside herself in joy as she quickly started to get undressed, completely ignoring me. I guess she thought of me as her sister or something, but I didn't look as she began to get ready. As she did her makeup, she casually said that I would need a girl's name and suggested Sarah, which I accepted. When she was ready, she hugged me, told me I was gorgeous, then asked if I were ready. Nodding my head yes, I drew in a deep breath as we walked out of her bedroom together. The girl I had seen in the mirror straddled my psyche with the twin legs of awe and doubt, with fear and pride helping to confuse the issue. The fact was that through a progression of small moments, every bit of my masculinity had been annihilated, leaving only a fading memory of the guy I had been before Claire worked her magic on me. She had led me down the path, but I had followed along without a fight. There wasn't even a fragment of the old me visible, not even the tiniest shred that I could hang on to for comfort. It wasn't a cataclysmic event from which there was no return, I could always undress, shower, and be myself again, yet strangely, I found myself not wanting that. Every moment leading up to that point had been nothing but a shower of turbulent feelings ranging from flat-out denial to anger, then to joy when I saw myself, each adding to my growing inner confusion. As my sister and I stood side by side looking in the mirror, I became very aware of the way I looked, and could see for myself the appeal I might have as a girl. I could feel my lifelong manhood slowly giving way under the unrelenting sense that I might have stumbled upon a path I did not realize existed. My lethargic ignorance of the slightest possibility that I would not only look the way I did, then like what I saw was awakened, and that thought sent shivers down my back. To see myself as a girl, a young woman that was not only pretty, but looked so realistically and deliciously feminine as well, continued to push my rapidly fading masculinity into the background, a revelation that awoke within me a sense that I can only call primal. I felt as if I should shout out my denials to the world either that or maybe scream Eureka. Either way, if I said that the contrast between how I looked as a guy and how I looked as a young woman was night and day I would not be understating the difference. It was no contest. Dad was right. I did look better as a girl than a guy. Sarah looked gorgeous and sexy while Mike was bland and nondescript. 
I looked at my sister, unable to restrain a grin, knowing that I had discovered something new and exciting about myself. I found out that I liked how I looked as a girl, and I'm positive she knew it. I was squeezing her hand as she and I walked out together, to once again face our parents. Both mom and dad were waiting for us. When they saw me, and unlike the first time, neither of them laughed or made any comments. This is really. Dad said, what I mean is, I never thought that you would look so. This isn't like the last time, it's. What, dad? That I'm cute? Hot? Sexy? I didn't think it would turn out this way, dad, but it's not bad, and I sort of like it. Like it? You're telling me that you like dressing up as a girl? To tweak him a little I said, if I can look like this, and according to you I certainly look pretty enough, hell yes, but if nothing else, you're not laughing now, are you? Her name is Sarah, Claire told them, I think it suits her. Well, mom said, I think that we can both see that you've become a very lovely young lady, only. Our son just isn't supposed to look like this. Well, Claire said, I like it. It's neat. Sarah is the sister I never had, and she's just as pretty as anyone I know. What about you? Mom asked me. You said you like it too. I just hope you don't get into any trouble dressed like that. I'll be careful, Mom. I have to, don't I? We have to go. Come on, Sarah. On the way to the party. Just play it cool today, Claire told me, like you're really a girl, and see how it goes, and try to remember that your name is Sarah. If anyone does figure it out, so what? It's just a party. That's not the problem, Claire. The problem is what if nobody figures it out? I mean, look at me. Like I said, you're really cute, so just be cool about it, okay? Besides, I already know that you like it, so why worry? I'll try, I said with a sigh, I'll try. The moment we walked into the party we were besieged by guys offering us drinks and usually more, then Claire blithely wandered off with some guy, leaving me to fend for myself. The first thing I decided to do was to find some place to sit, then stay there, but just then someone touched me on the shoulder. Hi gorgeous. I'm Tom. What's your name? Sarah, I told him in a soft voice as I turned to look at him. You do know that it's completely illegal for a woman that looks like you to be all alone at a party like this, so why don't you and I get to know each other better? Before I could say no, he slipped his arm around my waist, led me to the drink table, and fixed one for me. He and I walked to a table and sat down, but I made sure that I was far enough away that he couldn't get overly friendly with me. I was having a hard enough time accepting the fact that I was actually at a party dressed as a girl, and Tom was a guy, and he was hitting on me. I sat across from him, smiling, wondering what I should do. I knew what he wanted, he was doing his best to find a way to get into my panties. It was all I could do to sit there trying to be as feminine as possible. I was unwilling to say that I was a guy, just in case he decided to get angry when he found out. That turned out to be a major mistake, because the more feminine I acted, the more he thought I was really a girl. Let's dance, Sarah. I'm not a very good dancer. That's okay, we'll just stand in one place and sway back and forth then. With that, he took my hand and gently pulled as I reluctantly got to my feet, walked about three steps, and as he put his arm around me, I did my best not to laugh when he looked down the front of my dress. But, it sure looked like I had them, he was a guy, and that's what guys did, so I stifled my giggle and let him hold me while we danced. In a way I was very pleased with myself, being able to look so nice, yet dancing with another guy felt really strange. Claire walked over, interrupted, taking me away from him so we could talk. Looks like you're doing just fine there girl. Yeah, but he thinks I'm a girl. Isn't that the idea? Yeah, I mean no. He was looking down my dress. At my boobs. Get used to it Sarah, all guys do that. Yeah, maybe, but. Just go with it Sarah. I mean, you have to admit, you're really cute, so why not take advantage of it? Claire, I'm not a girl. Am I interrupting? It was Tom. Tom, this is my sister Claire. I see that beauty runs in the family. Can we have a minute Tom, Sarah and I have to talk, okay? 
After she and I walked away, do you know what you just did? What? Did I say something wrong? You sure did. You told him I was your sister. So? You are, aren't you? Of course I am, but nobody knew that. Now he not only thinks we're sisters, he knows where to find you. See him over there? Talking to that tall guy? That's Rick. He just asked me out, and with those two talking. I get it Claire, but all I have to do is never appear again, and he'll go away. Oh. And just how is my sister, you, going to simply disappear? Oh shit. You got it Han, and unless he's dumber than a post, or gay, there's a good chance he'll ask you out, so you might as well think about what you're going to do, because I don't think he's the kind of guy to give up easily, especially with the way he has been looking at you. Claire patted my arm, and with a smile, walked over to where Rick was standing, leaving me to wonder how I had managed to let things get out of hand so quickly. One drink, one dance, one simple comment, and there I was. Tom was back at my side at almost the same moment Claire walked off, which is when he did exactly what Claire said he would do. He asked me out. He must have seen the concern in my eyes, because that's when he suggested that maybe a double date with Claire and Rick would be better. I looked over at Claire who was slowly nodding her head slightly, then she grinned at me. She wanted to go out with Rick, and by asking us both, the guys expected us both to say yes, but if I said no, then Rick might drop Claire, and I would probably take hell for it. With a sigh, I smiled and told him I would be delighted. He squeezed my hand, grinned, then took me into his arms to dance again. In heels I am almost 5 feet 11 inches, yet Tom was taller than me by at least 3 inches, so I still had to look up at him. Tom never made any move on me the whole time, but he never left my side either. He had clearly staked a claim, and wanted all the other guys to get the message loud and clear. Because I had to look up at him, he had to look down, and when he did, he saw my brown eyes surrounded by eyeliner, curled eyelashes, eye shadow, and looking a bit further south, my boobs, all confirming in his mind that I was a girl. I really had not expected to go for an entire afternoon and not be found out, but that's what happened, which, after Tom took an interest in me, left me in a box. I had a date, but unless I was willing to expose myself as Claire's brother the minute Tom and Rick showed up at our door, they would have their belief that Claire and I were sisters confirmed. I could have said no to the date, but if Rick had declined to ask out Claire, then she would be really angry with me, which is why I said yes. I had been down that road before, and did not care to try it again, even if I did have to dress up. Claire and I were close, and I did not want to damage our relationship, especially right then. Besides, I told myself, I liked everything about being dressed up as a girl, except I had no clue on how to act around guys, and wasn't even sure I could pull it off, and worse, our parents were going to find out I had a date, which was a moment I could hardly wait for. That thrilling moment when dad would find out that I had accepted a date with a guy. He would go nuts at the very best. Later that night, as Claire and I started for home, she was looking at me with a grin on her face. When I asked why, she told me that I had somehow managed to use nothing but feminine mannerisms all evening. She said that I must like being a girl more than I wanted to admit, then she sort of casually said. Um, how would you like, she asked me with a wide grin, to have some better boobs. I bought them when I got that panty brief. They're fake, but they look and feel real enough, and they might make you feel better about all this. I didn't tell you about them before because I didn't want to scare you off, but seeing as how we both know that you like being a girl and now that you have a date with Tom. I said nothing, and when we got home, she dragged me into her bedroom, then reached into a bag I had not seen earlier, and pulled them out. It looked to me like she was holding a real breast in her hand, and as I reached out and took it from her, I could tell that it felt exactly like a real breast should feel. The color looked pretty close to my skin color, the back was slightly concave, and the nipple looked as real as it should have. You know what? I already know that you like being a girl more than you want to say, I could tell, and since I'm sure that I'm right, then why not use them? You never know, having your own boobs might be just what you need, and on top of that, you won't have to wear that corset just to create boobs. Claire had somehow reached into my soul and saw how I was feeling. 
It had happened when I first saw myself as a girl, and when we were ready to leave for the party, it was confirmed. I knew in my heart that she was right. Sadly, my dad was also right. I did look better as a girl than a guy, but it was more than that, it was something that I could not define, but the bottom line was that I like everything about being a girl. Still, I felt the quickly fading tug of my masculinity, such as it was, nagging at me, and I kept trying to avoid the plain fact that regardless of the fact that I was a guy, I looked and felt better dressed up as a girl than I ever did as a guy. Still a bit excited, and more than a little scared about being asked out, I looked at Claire for a moment, saw the smile on her face, and completely caved into the feelings I had. I nodded my head yes. Expecting to just slip them into a bra, Claire had another idea, reaching into the bag once more, pulling out the adhesive. Without a word of dissent from me, she helped me get the dress and corset off, then used the glue to set each breast form in the right place and had me hold them there until the glue set up. When I let go, they just hung there, looking for all the world as if I had grown them myself. I struggled to get used to those breasts, especially that night as I lay in bed. They seemed to get in the way all the time. But, the next morning when I got up and they were still there, and I just knew that I might have made a very big mistake. Since there was no way to hide the fact that I had boobs, I put the bra on over my new and very unfamiliar additions, and when I did, the results made me look every bit as much a girl as my sister. I picked up the pleated skirt Claire had given me and stepped into it, then one of the tops, a tan one. It matched the browns in the skirts. Tugging it down I saw in the mirror that like Claire's, it hugged my body tightly, and the low v-neck revealed the cresting tops of my new boobs. I put on my gym shoes, tried my hand at doing my own makeup, brushed out my hair, added earrings, then knocked on my sister's door. Claire was also wearing a skirt and top. I had gotten dressed, wearing the same panties, the borrowed bra, padded panty brief, pantyhose, then the skirt and blouse, I had done my own makeup, and my hair, which only needed a simple brushing, I changed my earrings for some gold hoops, used a dash of perfume and put on some lipstick, and when Claire was dressed, we left to get breakfast. She and I walked down the short hallway to find mom. In two days, completely by accident, I had found out that I not only liked the way I looked as a girl, with my new additions, I felt like more like one than I ever imagined possible. That's when Claire said that she and I should go out, and at the very least, get me some panties and at least one bra of my own. All you have is the pair you have on, the bra I loaned you, and even though that corselet has a built-in bra, I doubt that you'll want to wear that every time. Okay? Dad's going to have a cow. He already did Sarah. He already knows how you look, and he also knows that you like it, because you told him yourself. Remember? Yeah, I remember, but he still doesn't know I have a date. I can hardly wait for that to happen. The way you look. Dad might not like it, but I doubt he'll say much, and besides, it's not your fault you look the way you do. Let's plan on leaving at 10? Yeah, I guess. Mom and Dad had laughed when they heard what I was going to do, but the laughter stopped the moment they saw the girl that Claire and I had created, and now, I not only had a date, I was looking forward to it. Mom saw us, put down her knitting, and stood up. She was not laughing. Well, look at you. Mom said slowly. Well, um, is she wearing them? Claire nodded her head yes. Well, I guess that settles that question, doesn't it? What? I asked stupidly. Claire and I talked last night, honey. She told me how it went last night, and how you let her glue those things to your chest. That's when we both figured that if you agreed to have those boobs glued to your chest, then this dressing up thing meant more to you than any of us expected. In fact, none of us expected this to happen, that you would like it I mean, but it sure looks like it has, doesn't it? I started to answer her, but, don't try to deny it, we can all see it on your face honey. You look just darling as a girl, and you're just as pretty as Claire. She's got great legs too mom. Yes, she does doesn't she? I did not know that Claire and mom had talked. You didn't know it mom, I forgot to tell you, but she has a date tonight, and since she doesn't have anything to wear, we thought we would go to the mall and get her a few things. A date? That was quick. 
I got roped into it, Mom. Really, it wasn't my idea. It's never our idea, honey. It's the guys, and they usually find a way to talk us into things. Is that what happened? You got talked into a date? Not really, Claire said. It's like this. Claire went on to explain how it all happened, which caused Mom to first gape at me, then she broke out in roaring laughter. When Mom regained her composure, she drew herself up to her full height of five feet one inch and announced that she was coming with us, just to make sure that I got what she called proper attire. Barely able to suppress her giggles when she said that, she told us to eat, then we could go. Thinking about actually buying girls' clothes for myself made me queasy, so all I could eat was some toast. Telling me it would be all right, Claire and I joined Mom as we left for the mall. The night before, when I saw myself as a girl, I was extremely pleased, and according to Claire, I had somehow fallen into acting like one at the party. I couldn't say that I didn't like the attention, but I did, and with the attention coming from Tom, well, it was unsettling, and now, having Mom take me to the mall as if it were the most natural thing in the world, I knew that attention would be the least of my problems. Knowing you're a guy, and knowing how you look as a girl is one thing, but being in a place like the mall dressed as a girl wasn't something I wanted to do, and did my best to get out of it. You're the one, Mom said in a firm voice, that accepted that date Sarah. You could have said no, it wouldn't have been the end of the world, but you didn't, did you? I can only infer, especially after you let Claire stick those boobs on your chest, that you like being a girl, at least enough to keep doing it, at for at least a while, and if that's the case, then you'll have to have lingerie of your own. Girls borrow things, but not underwear, which is why we are here, and the only shoes you have are those heels you wore last night. While the gym shoes you have on right now might be comfortable, it's not something you would wear on a date, is it? Mom, I never said that I wanted to do this, I just got caught up in it I guess. Maybe, but the fact remains that you have accepted a date, and I will not let you go out looking like a refugee. Besides, maybe you'll like it, being a girl on a date with a handsome young man. Then she burst into giggles again. Face it, Claire said, you're just so cute as a girl, and not. As cute as a guy? I didn't say that. But when's the last time you had a date, with a girl? Let's not get caught up in all that, Mom said, let's just get Sarah a few things of her own. Mom, are you sure you want to come? I asked. Absolutely. If I don't there's no telling what Claire will have you wearing. I had never had any luck with girls and Claire knew it, and her implication was clear. As a guy I sat home, but as Sarah I was going out. I was still chewing on that when we walked into the mall, and just like that, Claire headed for one of those sexy underwear places, but Mom pulled her in, directing both of us to a department store. The fun I had expected, shopping, with Claire I mean, maybe buying a new bra of my own, was dashed into the dirt when Mom decided to come along. I looked at Claire who just shrugged her shoulders and gave me that hopeless look. Mom beat us into the lingerie department, which is when Claire told me to just remain calm. That idea was killed when the very first thing Mom did when she saw us walk into the area was to go right up to the sales lady and proceeds to announce to the whole store that her daughter, me, needed a bra, then asked if the lady could recommend anything. All that was missing was her bullhorn. I was horrified, but the sales lady came right over, smiling widely at me. My mother's aim was not to make me the subject of humiliation, but when the sales lady quickly asked if I had ever been fitted for a bra before, I glanced at mom and saw her shaking her head no. It was like a light went on in that sales lady's eyes, and she went through the routine of dragging mom and I through the department examining the merchandise. She and mom picked out a few, then led me to a back room. There were more bras and things there as well as plenty of mirrors on the walls and several comfortable looking chairs. Your mother says that you've never been fitted for a bra before, but I can tell you from experience that once you find the right size and style, you'll look and feel more feminine than ever before. She had that right, I had never been fitted for a bra before. With mom and Claire standing there watching, the lady had me stand up, asking me to remove my blouse, then handed me one of the bras she had selected, and pointed at one of the small booths. 
As crazy as it all was, being a guy getting fitted for his first bra, it was also just about the most feminine thing a young woman can have happened to her, and as I stepped into the booth alone, I wondered what she was going to say when she discovered my breast forms. As good as they were, and as much care as I had taken to hide the thin seams, she was after all, a professional bra fitter, and you would think that she could certainly tell a real breast from a fake one. That's what caused me to stay in that booth longer than I should have I guess. It was mom that stuck her head in and told me to come out. When I did the woman went right to work, settling the bra in place and adjusting the shoulder straps. If she realized I wore breast forms, she never once let on. You want to adjust the straps carefully my dear, they hold the weight of your breasts, and there should be no pressure on your chest when you have them adjusted correctly. You want the bra to be just barely tight as it goes around your body, and the straps should be adjusted to hold just the weight of your breasts. It was comfortable all right, the gentle sense of newness and the way the bra made me look and feel caused me to grin, which is when mom bought the bra I had on as well as another just like it but in a peach color. Claire oud and odd over the lace trim, push-up pads in color, while mom, who was usually bent on saving money, was buying me things I had no business owning, and that left me wondering why. After all, I was her son, yet there was one long flurry of activity as mom and Claire set out to make sure that I had some clothes of my own, starting in lingerie of course, but still on a mission it seemed, we added skirts, tops, blouses and dresses, and finally, shoes. By the time we on our way out of the mall, I was shaken, because I knew that not only had Claire been right when she said that I liked being a girl. I did like it, but the thing is, I still didn't know why. She was also right when she said I was cute. It turned out that I have a feminine face, although it only became apparent when I wore makeup. The next, and maybe even the most stunning thing about what was happening to me was that after 17 years as a boy and zero dates, on my first day as a girl, I had a date, but with another guy. Claire gave the words poetry in motion a new definition as she was both sexy and feminine, and most guys just stood open-mouthed as she walked by, almost always followed by a sigh of deep satisfaction and desire as she passed them. The fact that at least one guy looked at me that way made me feel very strange, yet really good I guess. As a guy I never felt the slightest bit of admiration, no passionate desire to be with me, no girl that wanted to pick me out of the crowd as suitable. My shapeless body won no trophies, no hearts, and no adoring fans. I was just one of the boys, an acquaintance to almost every boy in school, but never close to any of them, and never a boyfriend to a girl. Where Claire could wear any of her newest acquisitions, not excluding a skimpy little number with more straps than coverage and get away with it, I had a hard time fitting in no matter what I wore. Claire walked with the confidence so many beautiful women have, knowing she was being watched with admiration or envy, and now she was trying to help me find that same confidence, but not as her brother, but as the girl she was calling Sarah, her sister. She was graceful while I had always felt like a klutz, only that had seemed to disappear the moment I saw the girl I had become, just before we went to the party. As we walked in the house I tried to be as graceful as Claire was, then mom told me to go try everything on. Claire and I went into my bedroom, and after I was down to my panties, she handed me one of the new dresses. When I reached for it, her hand reached out and stopped me. Can I do Sarah's nails, mom? Might as well. It looks like she'll be around for a while, doesn't it? Mom, I can quit if you want me to, I. No, dear. You accepted this date, so let's see how this all works out before we do anything. Now, go with your sister. She'll show you how to do your nails. By the time an hour had passed, Claire had added tips to my nails, filed and sanded them to fit my hands, then painted each one a soft red color. I was in so deep that I was sure that dad was going to disown me, yet all I could do was go forward, especially after Claire told me the glue she used on the breast forms would hold for a few weeks. When I mentioned it. Sarah. You and I both know that you're not going to give this up anytime soon, so just quit trying to convince me otherwise. Besides, after a few weeks of being a girl you'll know if you like it as much as I think you do. Dad? He'll get over it, but like I said, I think he knows already anyway, especially after he found out about your date tonight. Great, I said sarcastically, now dad won't talk to me at all. I have an idea Sarah. 
How about we try to look just alike tonight? Yeah, why not? Dad is going to go ballistic when he finds out that I have boobs, so maybe, if we look alike. Later that afternoon Claire pulled a pale blue shirtwaist dress out of the closet and had me step into it. I pulled it up to my waist, slipped my arms into the sleeves and pulled it the rest of the way on. It was snug all over, and with the scoop neck, I was revealing more than just the top of my breasts, they were almost indecently exposed. Next came my black heels. The dress was just slightly past my knees in length, but when I walked around the room it had a flounce that I thought was sexy as hell. Claire changed into an outfit almost identical to mine, hers was lilac. When she was changed, I sat at the vanity as she got out her blow dryer and curling iron. She did my hair, sprayed it in place and secured one side with a blue barrette. Then she did her own hair almost identical to mine, and just before we walked out of her room, we stood in front of the mirror. There was no doubt about it, we looked like sisters. She and I hugged like girls do, then walked out to get mom's approval, but just then dad walked in and saw us. Claire and I stood there holding hands. There was no doubt that I looked like a girl, from my heels to my narrow waist, bursting boobs, and makeup. I was so positively a girl, right down to the nail polish that all dad did was stare at us. You look very nice, he said, then walked out of the room. Mom came in and also told us we looked very nice, then glanced at the clock. Rick and Tom would be there within ten minutes. The guys were right on time, and as Tom slipped his arm around my waist when we walked out, I heard Dad tell the guys that we had to be home by midnight. Tom was a perfect gentleman all evening, and except for the peck on the cheek I gave him, I suffered no roving hands or anything like that. By the time I was in bed I wasn't quite as eager to deny how I felt, which was really strange, considering how so few days had passed since this all began. It was as if I had found within myself something that I did not know about, yet it seemed to feel like it was exactly what I had been looking for all along. Dressing as a girl turned out to be that one thing that would let me feel as if I belonged. I had no idea. I lay there thinking about all the times I had sat home, attended the games alone, and worse, all the dances and parties I had not been invited to. Comparing all that to what had happened to me in just a few days, but as a girl, I was positive that I was right. I should have been a girl all along, but since I wasn't, I made an oath to myself to accomplish that task as quickly as possible. The next morning I spent hours in my bedroom alone. I didn't tell anyone what I was going to do or why, but I knew what I wanted to try and find out, which is why I spent hours online. Eventually, I found exactly what I needed, and following the instructions, I set up the camera and took close-up pictures of my waist, thighs, and butt, then I made very careful measurements. Attaching the digital pictures was easy, then I sent in the form. When I did get dressed, I wore jeans and a top, my hair pulled back and almost no makeup. Dad motioned to me, and I followed him outside to the patio. Shutting the door. I want you to change clothes right now. This girl thing has gone on long enough. You've had your fun, and while you look very nice, I did not raise you to be wearing a skirt or dress. You're my son. I can understand playing around a little, but I think it's time that you got back to normal. There it was. His demand that I go back to being the bland, almost faceless guy I was before. He and I stood there for a moment. He in his jeans and tee, me in my jeans and a blouse. My breasts poked against the material, falling in a drape to the knot I had tied in my shirt. Well, he said, are you going to go change? No. No. What does that mean? It means that I'm not going to change dad. I see. And just what does that mean? It means, it means that I like how I look dad, and for the first time in my life I feel like I'm alive. Alive? What the hell does that mean? Dad. You know perfectly well that I never went anywhere, unless I went by myself, I never had a date, nothing. I've always been just another face in the crowd. Now, for the very first time in my life, I feel like I belong. Dad, I know you don't like this, but look at me. You've already told me that I look better as a girl, right? I even had someone ask me out. Think how that makes me feel, after all this time I finally had a date, and to get it I had to wear a dress. Besides, 
I can't quit now. Am I supposed to guess why? The breast forms are glued on, and I have no idea how long the glue will last. Claire didn't tell me, but maybe. About three months? So, three months. You're telling me that you'll have those things for the next three months. More or less, yeah, I guess, I really don't know. And you knew that before you glued them on? Well, no, but I found out the next day that it would last a while. I never thought that you would like to dress up like a girl, I'll tell you that much. What I should do is force the issue, but I don't see how I can do that. You're still a minor, but since you're out of high school, if I do force you to change, all you'll do is leave when you turn 18, and probably start dressing up again. It's not like that, Dad. It's, I never felt this good before. It's like I should have been a girl all along and none of us knew it. You know that I never did this before, except when I was a kid, but now. Now that you've tried it for what? Just a few days? And from that you have decided that you should have been a girl? I nodded my head yes, watching his dad shook his head back and forth. Three months? Are you sure? No, dad. That's just a guess. Three months, dad said as he went inside, to find mom, probably to ask her if it was true. Four days later the panty arrived. Mom gave me the package without the slightest hint that anything was wrong. Call me when you have it on honey. I want to see if it's as good as I'll bet it is. What makes you think? Just put it on and call me when you're ready. I went in my room and shut the door, stripped to my skin, then pulled it out of the box. In a way it was like my padded brief, except that it was the color of my skin, and there were a few more additions. I read the instruction sheet twice before I even started, that one sentence, right at the bottom causing me to smile. This is a long-term garment, and once in place, removal of the panty can be very difficult due to the tight fit, so we urge you to consider removal only in an emergency, or at least the minimum time of six months if possible. Stepping into it I pulled it up as far as I could before I had to make sure that I had all my parts in the right place, then, with one pull, I had it to my waist. The wide hips and much rounder bottom were built in of course, only the twin flaps in the back needed to be glued in place. I tried, but in the end, before it got real messy, I had to call out for mom. She would help me or she wouldn't. I was holding up a robe to cover myself when she walked into the room, shutting the door behind her. Well, she said, and I threw the robe on the bed. She actually gasped. Damn. That's what I said when I saw it mom, but I need some help, and you're the only one at home. I showed her what needed to be done, and after a moment, mom took care of that one last item. The color was an exact match to my own skin, so unless you looked really close, no seam was visible, and my male parts had disappeared completely, replaced by what looked to be original equipment for a girl, right down to the thin strip of dark hair. There was nothing subtle about the change in the way I looked. It was just as dramatic as if I had grown another arm. I suppose this also lasts for three months? It says that I should remove it as little as possible mom. The instruction sheet says six months. You lied to your father about the breast forms, that's the first time I can ever remember you doing that. Is lying to us what all this is leading up to? Because if it is, then we have a serious problem, don't we? I didn't lie to him. I guessed. Claire never told me how long the glue would last. I made a guess. He probably took it the wrong way. He was starting to freak out mom. He, I told him how I felt, what it was like in school, I like being a girl mom. I don't know why so don't ask me, but for the first time in my life I feel, complete? Like I belong. Besides, I already knew that once I had this panty on it would be six months before I got it off, so. I'm sure that's true, but you could be yourself, even if you did have to wear this panty. Who would know? I would. So. What you're telling me is that you want to live as a girl? I nodded my head yes, and she said. I went along with this because it seemed like fun, and I even took you to the mall and bought you a few things, but that was just to find out how you would react. I never expected that you would decide to become a girl. Mom sat there looking at me. I guess I can understand it in a sense, 
Claire was popular in school, and I know that you stayed home alone a lot, so maybe there's some envy going on here? Is that it? You think that by being a girl you'll be more like Claire? Mom, in four years of high school all I managed to accomplish was to graduate. I was Mr. Bland the whole time, then one day as a girl and I get asked out? Look at me and try to tell me if I'm not better looking as a girl than a guy? Be honest about it, then tell me that you can't see it. That's the problem honey, I do see it. I also see this becoming a huge problem, especially with your father. He knows that you never showed the slightest interest in sports, except maybe tennis and golf, which is the exact opposite from him. He loves sports, and you never even tried to like any of that. Mom patted the bed and I sat down next to her. But this isn't about sports or sex, or any of that is it? No. It's how you see yourself, isn't it? Yeah. And you're absolutely convinced that this is what you want to do? Yes, but if it doesn't work out, I can always change back, can't I? Not for the next three months, remember? I said nothing. Get some clothes on and come sit outside. I got dressed, excited at the way my clothes fit, then joined mom outside. She and I talked for a long time, then she startled me by making a suggestion. I was at first unable to bring myself to even think that I could do it, but the more I thought about it, the more I became convinced she was right. Mom suggested that the only way to make my dad understand how I felt was to actually show him, making it clear that I was not only comfortable, but happy as well. I could tell that she was still struggling with the idea that I like being a girl, but I think she understood better than anyone in the family except me. I know that Claire likes to parade around in her new one, especially when your father starts treating her like a little girl, maybe you might try on one of her old ones? Later, when Claire gets home. Right on the dot of four, Claire walked in, and Mom and I descended on her, told her what we talked about, and when we were in her bedroom. You're not really going to wear that are you, Claire asked, her eyes wide as Mom held up the pink and green swimsuit. Don't be so silly, Mom said, she'll look wonderful in this. Trust me. But it's virtually a second skin, she said quickly, as if that explained her shock. Lots of girls wear bikinis, and this has more material than they do, I countered, and you've worn it once or twice, so why not me? After all, I'm your sister, right? Claire just stood there watching wide-eyed as I slowly undressed. She did not know about my newest addition until I finally slipped my panties off and stood there. Words failed her, and she could do nothing more than watch as I picked up the swimsuit and began to step into it. Once I made sure my breasts had been properly placed, I glanced in the mirror. While Claire was still in shock, staring at the utterly feminine way I looked. The coverage in back was more than the scrap of material in front, due to the high rise and cut of the suit, and offered to anyone that looked at me the outline of what looked to be a girl's anatomy. Claire seemed anxious, telling me to wait a minute. When she returned from her room, I saw that she had a very small panty liner. Grinning, she gave it to me, and I struggled to slip it inside the front of my swimsuit. The panty liner was smooth, which effectively hid the small depression made by my new parts, and made my crotch appear as flat and featureless as a little girl's. That's quite a trick, Sarah. You look just like a girl now. Care to tell me how? No, I said, let's just say that the girl fairy changed me overnight I guess. Claire, Mom said, now it's your turn to go change. You have something like this I believe? Within half an hour, Claire and I stood side by side with Mom looking at us. Well, if this doesn't wake him up, nothing will. Now, you girls walk out and head for the patio, but make sure that you take your time when you walk past your father, okay? Let's see if Sarah can get his undivided attention. Mom left the room when Claire did, leaving me to study myself in the mirror. There wasn't any doubt at all. I looked really good as a girl, a lot better than a guy dressing as a girl had any right to expect. In my own mind I felt that it wasn't a big deal to dress as a girl, yet I knew full well that I wasn't a girl, and also knew that if I promoted any pretense that I really was a girl, I would probably regret it big time. I had no idea that I would feel this way, not even a glimmer when Claire asked me to stand in for her friend at that fair, I agreed to do it on a lark, a fun thing to do, nothing more. 
All I had to do was stand there and look nice while I ran the cash register. Easy, I thought. A skirt and blouse, some makeup and earrings. It was when Claire helped me get ready that I began to see how much better I looked as a girl than a guy that I started to doubt myself. Like most guys, I never considered wearing anything remotely connected to a girl, yet the first time I saw myself all dolled up I was in a quandary. Did I like how I looked? Was it the clothes, or more? Then my dad ruined everything. I might have been able to hold on to my masculinity, but when he said that I looked better as a girl than a boy, I was hurt, which rapidly became anger, escalating so far that I agreed to go to that party. Then I let Claire glue the breast forms to my chest, knowing full well that my dad was going to freak out, and I was right, he did just that, which, regardless of how I felt, I thought he deserved it for saying what he did. I met Tom, and finally, went out on a date. I had been successful in my first outing as a girl, a revelation that drove me to reconsider what I was doing. Sure, as a guy I was sort of bland, and while I had a few friends, I was the sort of guy that drifts through so many high schools without any entanglements, which meant that I spent hours all alone, missing out on many things that so many others enjoyed. At the time I thought it was normal, but looking back on it I knew that I had been wrong all along. I deserved better, and my first taste of that came while I was dressed as a girl, so it wasn't hard to leap to the conclusion that I was better off as a girl, which I certainly did. My father hated it, mom was confused, and I was standing there without one trace of the real me in sight. I'm the one that bought that special panty, the one gave me very nice hips and a well-rounded butt, plus it made me look like a girl in her special place, but that was only after my date with Tom, and I realized that I like being a girl, and wanted more. Why? I have no idea. Only that it felt like the right thing to do. I did know without any doubt that wearing that swimsuit was going to drive a wedge between my father and myself. That was because it would clearly signal that I had stepped beyond the normal limits of just dressing up. There wasn't that one moment when I knew, it sort of crept up on me, and only came to rest when I saw myself naked, wearing the special panty and the breast forms. I think I was more shocked at the revelation than mom was, but I felt comfortable knowing that I had somehow achieved something unique all on my own, for the first time in my life, and it was something that made me feel very content with myself. The view in the mirror accented how I felt, only that same view made it a sure bet that the minute my dad saw me in that swimsuit he was going to go ballistic. Right at that moment I could have changed clothes, worn my own clothes and averted the storm, but that would have only delayed the inevitable. He and I had to face off, come to terms with the girl standing there, or I would have to leave. I just could not see any middle ground. Some might say that I came to like dressing as a girl rather quickly, and maybe that's true, but then again maybe not. After all, many people get addicted to things after one or two tries, so why not this? And isn't it true that when people hit on something special to them, don't they say the light came on rather suddenly? Why not this? I ran my hand down between my legs, feeling the smoothness there, then cupped my breasts, squeezing them enough to satisfy myself that they were, while not real, more than good enough for what I was about to do. I grabbed the perfume and touched my wrists and neck, added a bit of lipstick, finishing up just as my sister walked into the room. Ready? Dad is going to have a fit Claire, but I'm as ready as I'll ever be I guess. Claire walked out first, with me lagging behind. I made sure that I kept my elbows close to the body, my arms and hands limp as we sauntered into the family room. Claire and I were side by side, my hips moving like hers as we slowly walked through the room, stopping twice. I bent at the waist to pick up a magazine, while Claire picked up her book. As I stood up, I glanced at Dad and saw him sitting there open-mouthed, and just to tweak him. Like it? Claire loaned it to me. As we left the room I could hear Mom talking to Dad, but Claire wanted answers to specific questions, and pushed me outside where we would be alone. Okay, now tell me how you managed to look so much like a girl that it's scary. Does it, is it, can you? I ordered it Claire. It's a custom-made panty that makes me look exactly like a normal girl, and functions almost the same. I have to wear it for six months at a time, so that means that I'll be here for a while I guess. It's functional? Does that mean what I think it does? Claire, it even has small packets of blood that release after I wear it for a while. 
they say that I will have periods for about five, maybe six months. This is getting weird as hell. You're telling me that you can have periods? Yup. Just then dad walked out. Stand up. Both of you. When we did. Mom, Claire and I stood there together as dad scowled, pacing back and forth, unable to take his eyes off us. He was angry and hurt, that much was plain. I do not like this one bit, every one of you know this. Look at you. You look. Like a girl? Claire said. Do not interrupt me again young lady or I'll show you the true meaning of what an instant and long-term grounding really means. His eyes turned back to me, no longer bright with anger. They had turned hard. And you. Standing there like that. I never thought that you would give up your maleness. Never. Not in a million years. Just look at yourself. His tone of voice changed, but the eyes stayed the same. Sarah. That's what you're calling yourself now, isn't it? Well, Sarah, since you seem to have let this happen to you without a lot of fuss, and since all of you have told me that you can't get that crap off for three months or so, it seems that we're all stuck with you running around dressed like a girl. Right? It was a rhetorical question, so I kept my mouth shut. I don't know whether I should make you stay in your room for the whole time, throw you out, or anything else for that matter. I thought I knew everything about you, but it looks like I was wrong, doesn't it? All you were supposed to do was stand in with that friend of Claire's. All you had to do was fill in at some kind of girly art fair or something. I didn't like the fact that you even agreed to do that, but I thought what the hell, it was just a few days at most, and you might learn something from it. Now look what's happened. You've, damn it. I think you're overreacting, mom said, maybe what we need to do let Sarah find out for herself if she really feels like a girl or if it's just an infatuation. But our son went on a date last night. With another guy. Doesn't that bother you? Of course it does. But look at her, then tell me you can say there's one reason she should stay at home? Okay, dad said sourly, let's say we do what you suggest. What happens if she decides she likes being a girl? Then we'll have to accept that, won't we? She'll be 18 by then, remember? She'll be able to decide for herself what's right for her, won't she? That also means that I don't have to let her live here. But you will. And why is that? Because if you don't, you'll be here all alone. Claire, Sarah, and I will all be gone, that's why. You're telling me that you approve of our son dressing like this. No. You know perfectly well that I'm not thrilled to see our son dress this way, but we can hardly blame her for the way she feels, so what I'm saying is that I would rather she be here with us where we might have some influence on what she does rather than throw her out and let her find her own way. It's going to be hard enough as it is, so why make it worse? If she wants to be a girl, then wouldn't it be better if she were here with us? Damn it, Dad said as he spun on his heel and stomped off, going back in the house. Mom turned to Claire and I, a scowl on her face. I meant what I said Sarah, I don't like to see you dressing this way one bit, but there doesn't seem to be anything I can do about it, is there? I admit that I let you do this, and maybe I might have encouraged you a little, but I never expected you to like it so much, or even want to give up being a guy. For the life of me I do not understand that at all. But you just said. Shut up Sarah. I'm not in the mood to argue right with you right now. Pausing a moment, mom walked up to me. We cannot, and will not, support you for the next three months or whatever it is. You need clothes, jewelry, shoes, lingerie, and a lot more, so you'll have to find a job that suits you. That way you can buy your own things, pay your rent, and so on. Plus, I'll expect you to help Claire and I take care of the house. We'll make sure that you have enough to get by with, and starting right now we'll consider you a girl, but just like Claire, you'll pay room and board. Is all that clear? Yes, I said slowly, but... No buts. You have decided this is what you wanted, and now you have it. You have one week to find a job or you're done with being a girl. Understand? Yes. Good. Mom visibly relaxed, then... I'll go in and talk with your father. He is very upset with all of us. But he's the one that said I looked better as a girl than a boy mom. 
That's true, he did say that, but that's not the reason for all this and you know it. My suggestion is that you find a way to be as feminine as possible as quickly as possible. Maybe he'll lighten up if he doesn't see you using any masculine ways, and you'll need them if you have any hope of getting a job. Now you girls go put some clothes on. This show is over. I went in my room and put on a skirt and blouse, then went in to see Claire. She was sitting on her bed crying. I went to her and held her in my arms. This was supposed to be a fun thing. I never thought that you would like it. It's all my fault. If I hadn't glued those boobs to your chest none of this would have happened. You're wrong about that Claire, if you hadn't done it, I would have done it myself. You're not to blame, nobody is. You sure about all this? She asked plaintively, I mean. I know what you mean, and yes, I'm sure, but now I have to prove it don't I? By getting a job? How? You don't have any identification that says you're a girl. We do have a scanner don't we? And a digital camera? If you help, I'll have all the identification I need. Between my sister and myself, and using all of the technology at hand, we created a brand new set of ID for me, including healthcare card, driver's license, and a library card. Then we used the laminator in dad's office to finish the job, and I left to find a job. I wore the tan and white skirt with a white blouse and a saddle jacket with my white heels. The first place I tried was a candle shop, but they were not hiring. Walking a bit further down the street I walked into storefront that had no sign. Turns out it was an attorney's office. Hiring? You type? Do filing? Yes, great. You're hired. Set up a desk and I'll show you what I need. Looking around, the dingy walls in a room with no ceiling tiles did not inspire confidence. He saw the look on my face. This is just temporary, our office downtown was flooded by a broken sprinkler so we decided to remodel. This is only for about a month or so before we go back downtown. Will I be going with you? Or is this job just for here? My other girl quit, so it's here and there if you want it. How much? $15 an hour, 40 hour week, okay? Works for me. He showed me his disastrous filing system and simply let me have a go at figuring it out. By the end of the day I asked if I could wear slacks and he said yes of course. The next day I was wearing jeans as I started sorting out his files. Whoever did this job before me had no clue how to keep records. That would be a girl named Janet, a daughter of a friend he said. His name is Mike, he's about 50 and married with one son named Jason. He and I got along quite well, and he didn't even blink when I told him story. He merely smiled and told me I should change my name. So I did. Within two weeks my name had been changed and my future decided. When we finally moved into the new offices I was the one that supervised the move. I have a wonderful office now. I finally got the chance to meet his son when he came home on leave. He's a pilot, flying the newer combat jets. Of course he was handsome like his dad, and only a bit older than me. He has a wonderful smile and we hit it off right away. He and Mike went to lunch while I minded the office. I did not see Jason for about two months, and by then I had started to take the hormones to help me complete my journey. My sister was still helping me and very excited about Jason and I, but there was nothing to tell her. My father had given up trying to make me a boy again, and we reached a stalemate. My mom was not thrilled at my choice either but she understood a bit better. Jason and I are having lunch today. Let's see where it goes.